and we are live. All right. Welcome to the first ever, not the first ever actually. I did a live stream a few years ago and then maybe a few years before that. I've always wanted to do more cooking live streams, um, but we've got the setup. We've got the four cameras going. Give me a little, give me a little action right now. Some action. We got, yeah, we've got. Boom. Oops. Oops. Here we go. Yeah, working there we the go. Kinks. Yeah, working ah. out the kinks. <laughs> That's Cooper. He's producing the show. Um, so basically, first episode, we did a little live stream yesterday, just a Q&A to work out some kinks, and there were. So just, you know, stick with us. But the goal here is really just to, I'm looking at this. I should look at you. The goal is to just cook together, basically. Obviously, we're not really cooking together. But this is live, you can comment in, we're hanging out, and you can ask questions, you can comment, you can do whatever you want. But really, I am just cooking in my normal way that I would be cooking. And that's what I love about this format, is that you can't hide anything. We're actually live to YouTube right now. So um, basically, I'm just gonna get started. The theme of today is meal prepping with a full-time job, okay? So for me as a YouTuber, I'm busy. <laughs> it might not look that way, but it is a very busy lifestyle and just an entrepreneur in general running a business. It's crazy, I have two little kids. Well, since I've had two kids, my life has completely changed and now it's even, there's just more on the line, especially when I have to get food on the table every day and you know breakfast lunch dinner i just put out a whole video on this it's intense and but there's still a way to do it but maybe not the way you think you should be doing it and that's what we're going to cover today so first what are we going to make first you know what i'm going to start with a little bit of some i wouldn't call them overnight oats because they don't have to be overnight oats um actually my wife made this recipe yesterday for the first time. She added some chia seeds, and you can make this with just oats. Um, so the truth is I've never, I've never done this. A lot of this cooking on this uh, live show is gonna be me trying things for the first time again. This is realistic cooking. We are just hanging out and hopefully inspiring each other. Um, I know for me, I would love to inspire you to just show up every day because that's what home cooking is all about. That's what being a pro home cook is all about. Okay. So the first thing people are in here, right? People they are, are here. Here. <laughs> remember blowing, you're up the chat. blowing up the chat. You're, we're going to bring up your comments on the chat. Um, and I'm just going to take them um, throughout. I don't know if there's anything interesting yet or you got a quick one here. Yeah. Um, where'd you get that apron? Oh, wow. Uh, where where the, the comment didn't come in? Can we, can we, did we miss Boom. that chance? There we go. Oh, there we go. Ah. <laughs> there it is. Cletus. So this is uh, Chef Satchel actually very relevant because I have a little special coupon for anyone in the live stream right now that I will go over very shortly. Um, Cooper will bring that up. Not, not now, but you know, stick around for a few minutes and it will, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about this apron. I know it's been like five minutes. We haven't even cooked. So let's get into it. So, um, Basically for this, the idea is that we're meal prepping. We're trying to get as much food on the table as possible. Um, and we do that by taking advantage of the time that we have. So for me, a lot of times, you know, I wake up in the morning, I have nothing for the whole day. And it's like, okay, I have 30 minutes. I have maybe 40 minutes and I am just gonna get going. I'm just gonna start cooking as much as possible, like I'm doing right now, just get in the fridge, get in the pantry, and just start making food. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the sort of standard meal prep that people think about is like this systematic approach where you, uh, you, have, to, um, you have to plan everything in advance and, um, you know, you got to bulk a bunch of meals at one time, but that's not the way meal prep works for me. The way meal prep works generally, like if I have a Sunday and I have a, you know, an hour or two, then I'm going to cook as much food as possible. But a lot of times I am just going to wake up in the morning and just start 
producing food. This is survival here, and that's what being a home cook is all about. So the coconut milk, as you can see, is completely solidified. So what I like doing generally is I'll just pop it into one of these containers, one of these little deli containers, which I love. And just to kind of mix up the, the thick cream with the thinner liquid, the coconut liquid. And then that way you have an actual even coconut milk. Right now we have like cream and then just white thin coconut liquid. But if we mix it up like this, actually, what is the best way? Maybe if we just shake it up. Shake right it here, up. shake it up. Boom, 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 up, and we're we're spilling, we're spilling. That's why I love wearing an apron. <laughs> All right, I'll throw that little chunk in there. So now we have kind of, you know, it's not perfectly smooth, but we have a coconut milk. And then I'm just gonna pour, I'm completely eyeballing this. My wife, she would, she's she's got the measurements going. Um, that's just not the way I cook, especially when I'm trying to produce food in of, uh, you know, 30 minutes for my entire family. So I'm gonna do about, to some degree, as best as I can, equal parts coconut milk and water right here, because just straight coconut milk, you can use almond milk, you can use regular milk, any type of cream product is gonna be great. You need, a, I mean, you could use water if you want, but it's just not gonna taste as good. You won't have that creamy element. Um, so right here, these chia seeds, they're going to expand by like four times. The oats are going to expand by about three times. And the truth is, it doesn't matter the consistency because you can always even it out. So like I'm going to, you know, wait, say 30 minutes, start cooking some other things. And then if this uh, is too thick, I can just thin it out with some water. But what I do want to add is I see some honey there. Do I have maple syrup in the fridge? I think I do. I think that's what this is. I'm gonna get some maple syrup and I think I have some cinnamon. Do I have cinnamon? Come on. Cooper, is there cinnamon over? I see it. Hook me up right there. Boom. Yeah, right on the counter. Sushi. We've got wires everywhere, so I can't get over there. Thank you, Sue. You can be, <laughs> right now Cooper is wearing many, uh, many hats in the kitchen, producer. A little bit of, I, I didn't expect the, the sous chef in there, but um, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> By the way, if anyone lives in Long Island, I said this yesterday, if any of you live in Long Island, I know that's like a very small population of the audience, if any, I'm sure there's some people, um, and you're interested in being a part of Pro Home Cooks, being a part of this show, Hit me up on Instagram at Life by Mike G. We are looking to expand the team so Cooper doesn't have to do everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm just doing a little bit of maple syrup. Again, the sweetness is totally, um, totally up to you how much you want. Like this is already, this is thickening up a lot. Oats and chia both take time to fully absorb the liquid, um, but I can already tell that I'll probably just add, and when I say I can already tell, you know, it's just these things come from experience. Don't be scared to just get in there and try things out and fail. Well, failing is like, how bad can it be? Um, but you know, not get it perfect the first time. I mean, is it ever perfect? This is like constantly, I don't think I've ever made something really close to the same in my life um, because again, I don't use the recipes. Okay, so we're mixing that up and you know, I'm just gonna sample it. That's really nice. That's really nice. Very simple. Four ingredients, cinnamon, chia, oats, um, coconut milk. I already lost track, but four or five ingredients. That is a breakfast right there. And when my wife made this yesterday, I was very, very impressed on how easy it was to how delicious it is. That's like, that sort of ratio is very important to me when you're trying to put food on the table. So what I can do here, even, I can take another one of these containers. These are my favorite deli containers. 
and I can just pop that in there. And again, this is ready to eat. You, I mean, you could technically eat this now. It's totally fine, but it will thicken up and become a much better consistency if you just let that sit for a little bit. Um, and we'll just start cooking other things. And that's like, that's a great breakfast for, you know, you add some fruit, you add um, some fruit or nothing. This morning I had this and I just ate it straight up and it was delicious. Any questions coming in? I'd love Let's to take a question while I kind of get prepped for um, this next one. We got a couple super chats. Yeah. Oh, give me, give me mm -hmm. the first super chats of the, well, Sean, yesterday we had one. Yesterday right. we had, <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the super chat? We got Sean's gardening world again. Oh, from yesterday. Thank you, Sean. Got, uh, here we go. Pencil and pad at the ready. Oh, okay. Taking notes. I like that. Yep, Thank we got you, another Sean. One here. Simon EVQ and just. Up oh, the no uh, oh, we got GoPro a, down. The GoPro down. All right, we'll see. You'll you'll fix that. It's not as important. It's fine. We All right. It. Wow. How ten thousand? What is that? Where? What's that? Yeah, I don't know. Super, I'm super rich. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. What? Well, just a super chat. No actual. No uh, actual okay. question. All right. Any other super chats? And we'll no. get into. Uh, that was it for the super chat. Okay. Any any questions? We I would gotta, love to. Let's see here. Yes, you did hear Bill O'Reilly say we'll do it live. <laughs> um. Yeah, if you guys have any, you know, any questions while I'm doing this or just general thoughts, concerns, <laughs> chime in. I'm happy that that's what this is about. We're building we're building a, a community here at Pro Home Cooks. I really wanted to create this show to connect more with all of you because my videos you know, there it's nice. I get to put them out. I get to see your comments. Um, but there is still a disconnect that I was feeling over time. Um, and this is, I mean, this is great. We can actually have a live conversation. Ultimately, we would love to get people calling in with uh, just cooking questions, cooking challenges. Um, so we're going to try to evolve over time. Um, but so we got a question on yeah. what you just made. Uh, can you freeze it? Freezing. I mean, t you can 100%. You definitely want to let it absorb first. Um, let it get to its final thickness before you see right now. Still pretty, still pretty thin. Um, let it get to its final thickness before you freeze it. But 100%. There is no reason why this wouldn't hold up great just out of the freezer defrosted. I mean, it could even be some like unique frozen dessert if it's half defrosted or something like that so totally okay. we got a couple asking um will this be available later on the channel yes yeah please. so great question um while i get this pot mm -hmm. all right you snag pot i love this thing but it's got an interesting little handle right here um i'm just going to preheat this so this will be live forever not live forever this will be available forever that's why i love doing this on, well this is my first time but doing it on youtube we get to go live and connect live and then it gets to stick around but there's no editing so you know this is hopefully it goes well but that's also the point uh, you know to me i wanted to do a live cooking show because Cooking is live in real life. You know, a lot of the, every show on YouTube is edited in the cooking space for the most part. And, you know, I try to do my best with showing the mistakes and uh, the tribulations and just uh, real cooking. Try, I try to express that in, you know, the truest way possible but I'm still editing things. I'm still cutting things out because, um, you know, I'm trying to make a, a nice, entertaining 15 to 20 minute piece. Um, whereas in this case, this is happening in real time. If I screw up, you get to, you get to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, to me, again, cooking is about screwing up and learning from your, your mistakes. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're wrong. <laughs> they are wrong. All right. So what I have here, I didn't even explain this. I have some chicken breast. I'm also just preheating this pan. And I'll probably only cook one of these chicken breasts because they're, you know, that's a nice medium sized chicken breast. Uh, I'm going to take a plastic bag 
And this is a great option for, uh, you know, just meal prep in general for uh, a quicker option, which is just to pound it out a little bit. I will just wrap that up. I can keep this right in the paper towel and I'll actually, what do we got here? I'll just fold it up. Look at that, folded chicken. <laughs> and we're going right into the fridge with that. I'll use that tomorrow. And then we wash my hands. So no, while you're washing there, yeah, we've got another super chat. Speedhawk01 with the $5 quick high. Thank you, Speedhawk. I appreciate it. This is all new to me, the live action. Um, very exciting stuff. Uh, all right, so I do I even have, you know what? I don't think I have a true pounder. So we're gonna have to adapt. <laughs> we're already adapting. How can I do this without, maybe turn my mic down a little bit because this might get a little aggressive. Hi! Oh. <laughs> All right, we don't have to get too crazy. <laughs> is that, how loud is that? Crazy? It's a little loud. <laughs> All right, so just like that, the goal, you know, a chicken breast is a very uneasy, uneven, une it's a very uneasy cut. No, it's an uneven um, piece of meat. So if you flatten it out, not only are you going to get a thinner, um, quicker cooking piece of meat, but also will cook evenly. So it's just a really nice, really nice option there. I'll just keep it right on the plastic bag and I'm gonna season it right on the plastic bag so I don't contaminate anything. I'm just gonna go with pepper. Boom, 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 boom. And right now, the truth is I was thinking, okay, what am I gonna make for the live stream? And I'm gonna wash my hands now again because I just touch the chicken and oh, 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 I got a chia seed in my throat. <laughs> um, so I was thinking what I was going to make for the live stream, you know, kind of thinking too much into it, to be honest. And then I realized, you know, this is about the reality of cooking, like I've been mentioning um, over and over. And the reality to me is that I go to the market, which I just did, and... Look at the sun's coming out. Is that messing with the exposure? It's been rain a little bit. It's been raining for many, many days. Um, look at that for the chat. Sun's coming out. This is a little bit of oregano, a little bit of oregano. And then, yeah, so I went to the market and I just got inspired and started uh, thinking about what, what these ingredients inspire me to, uh, to cook. And that's... That's exactly what happened. And that's really generally how I come up with ideas. Someone actually in the Q&A asked that question of, you know, do you plan out meals? And for me, the truth is, like, sometimes I plan out, okay, I want to make, um, you know, this week I want to make Indian food. This week I want to make Mediterranean food. Um, and that helps you kind of wrap your head around things a little bit. And also you can get ingredients that, live in the same world so you can make multiple meals um, with those ingredients. But also a lot of times I just go to the market and just, you know, I have no concept of what I'm making. And that's what happened today. So we just need a little bit of oregano on this side. So just salt, pepper, and oregano. Keeping it really simple. Just so this is some, some herbage from my garden. You can see that. Boom, 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 boom. Um, I think... Is it just oregano? Yeah, I think it was just some dried oregano from my garden. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this pan is preheated now, which is fantastic. And this right here is some, caught you on that one. <laughs> this is some chicken, rendered chicken fat. Um, what did this come from? Uh, I just made, oh, rendered chicken and beef fat. I just made a stock in the last video. And um, this is what came off the roasting of the bones and some chicken wings. So I'm not gonna not use that. Chicken fat, beef fat to fry up this chicken. So we're gonna get that frying. And honestly, sometimes in the morning when I am trying to meal prep, when I'm just trying to get a lunch together for the day or maybe prep a little bit for dinner. 
I just start cooking and I don't even know what I'm making, <laughs> which is pretty much what's happening now. Um, so I'm just getting, you know, you can't go wrong with frying up a nice piece of chicken. That's going to be a great base. We're going to be able to, to take advantage of this flavor. Things are going to get a little sizzly on the sound. Um, but, you know, hopefully Cooper's got that under control. So got it. now that this thing's frying, we can just start prepping other ingredients. Um, so again, we're not, you know, a chef would look at this and be like, all right, where's the mise en place? Where are, uh, where are your prep veggies? Not how home cooking always works. Sometimes I got to, we've got 10 minutes. I mean, I guess in a restaurant that's happening as well. Um, but if you want like precise results every time, you do want things prepped out. Um, but I don't care about precision. I care about good, delicious food on the table. So in this case, chicken frying, let's head over to the fridge. Did the GoPro go back on? It is on. Yes. It's on. It's um, on. Okay, so we've got a little broccoli rob that I saw at the market and um, radicchio. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Again, just inspired by these two things. They were kind of the, the most sexy, exciting vegetables that I saw at the market. Um, and I figured I would turn them into something delicious with this chicken. So my thought is we, we kind of prep. Let's prep the radicchio first. I think what we can do is, let's think. Okay, maybe we just fry that. Fry that. We cut that right down the center and we're just going to have these little chunks and we can keep these. Hmm. You know what? I'll cut those in half. Those are pretty big like that. So we can fry those right on their side and then like that. Boom, boom, boom like that. So we're cutting this into ace. Look at that. You can do math. All right. And we're just keeping an eye on this temperature right here. You're, you're always just, trying to actively be involved with what's cooking. Don't forget about what's going on. I'm going to look for some uh, tongs. Do we have any questions? Any, anything uh, coming we got in? a few more super chats. Super chats. Bring them on. I love it. Super chat. Thank you for the super chats. Oh. Um, we got, there are in a lot of different currencies here. So. Okay, yeah. <laughs> International audience. Beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Simon Watching at all EVQ. different times. Thank you, Simon EVQ. Yeah, I think we saw that one, didn't we? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> TBCX. Thank, Thank you, TBCX. TBCX. We got Miss Vecna from Sweden. Hello, from freezing northern Sweden. Love it. Wow. You Beautiful. are tr true hero. <laughs> uh, you are true here. Of the common, but I think is. hero. Yeah, that's 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 how I'm interpreting. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're heroes. Over lost there. in the kitchen. You know, listen, it is all right to be a little lost in the kitchen, especially um, if you're if you're new to the kitchen, which I'm sure a lot of you are. Let's give this a flip. Look at that. Whoop! Got it. Look at that. Perfect. So those herbs did not burn. Nothing burned. We have a beautiful golden brown crust. Um, looks, it just, that just looks like flavor to me. Uh, and that's all it took just, you know, two minutes to season that chicken. And that's going to be delicious. You can see here plenty of fat. That is very important. A lot of people make that mistake of adding, um, too little fat. I think I said this recently in a video, you, well, I guess you can, yeah. I mean, if you add too much, you can always take away. But if you add too little and you burn your food, you can't take away the burn. So I can always pour a little bit of that off. But if you add too little fat, then you're going to run into some issues because you need that lubrication, basically. Um, it's like a shallow fry almost. And that's how you're going to get a pure golden brown crust. And it's one of the reasons I think that you go to a restaurant and the results are just so stellar. A lot of time, I mean, it's not just this reason. There's a lot of reasons, uh, including excellent technique. But 
when it comes to cooking with oil, a lot of home cooks and seasoning too, they just underdo it. And they're like, why is my chicken burning? Like, look, look at that right now. It's absolutely perfect. And I'm just pushing on the chicken right now just to kind of get a feel for it. It has a little bit of give. It will continue to cook after it comes out of the pan. Um, so it can be just slightly under, but it's all about maintaining that nice balance of we're searing right now. You see we're browning, but we're also cooking through. So if you go super high heat, then you're gonna, you're gonna over blast this chicken. You're gonna dry it out before you get a nice crust. Whereas um, we want that nice balance where, you know, we're just on like a medium heat it's got nice temperature, it can sear, but over time. So at the same time, we are also cooking this perfectly through. And a lot of that honestly just comes with trial, trial and error, trying it out, um, getting the feel, getting the feel for like, okay, what is chicken feel like when it's done? Um, and for me, <laughs> I've screwed that up so many times I'm going to turn on this GoPro because it keeps turning off. We'll figure that out. We will figure that out. <laughs> Let me see. I don't think I turned it on. Any questions in the meantime? We got some more super chats over here. Wow. Love it. Hey, Guys, next, so I didn't generous. forget about you. Is that five euros? Five euros. Love Put it. Put them on the thing. Okay. Turned 18 studying abroad. Small tips like your air frying Brussels sprouts help them out tremendously. Love nice. Ahmed. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a lot of air fry. I do. <laughs> That's real life uh, cooking for me is using that air fryer a lot, which is sitting over there. Can you can you see it? That's that's my mini Kosori. Yeah, there right is. there. OK, so this is feeling good. And yeah, so just a little bit of give. I'm like slightly concerned that it's under. You can always too, if you want, you can always take a thermometer, which I think I have in here. If you have one, I talked about this on the, uh, the chat the other day, um, yesterday about how these things are a lifesaver. Great investment to an invest in a good one. Like already, boom, 170. So we're, we're good there. I'm trying to just get into the thick part. Just a nice little, um, sort of security blanket, 190. We're, we're plenty cooked. So I'm gonna take that off. Boom. Again, if you think there's any recipe testing here, there is not. <laughs> that is not the type of cooking show you're gonna get on this live experience. Um, so we are really, I mean, it's experimental. So right now, let's see if I can fit. Can I even fit? You know what? I'm just gonna not overcrowd the pan. I'm using that same fat popping that radicchio in there, um, in those little slivers or ace, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to save it. That's why I love these things again, just having them around, boom, pop a lid on that. And now that's organized. I can see what that looks like. So tomorrow when I'm making a salad or something, it's the best for using up ingredients, these types of storage containers. You know, I, I whip open the fridge tomorrow and I just start pulling things out like this. Okay, how am I gonna use up this radicchio? Probably gonna just slice it up, throw it in a salad, but I could put it in a stir fry, a lot of different options. So I'll just toss that in the fridge. And while I'm at the fridge, I'm gonna pull out a few more ingredients because I think what I'm gonna do, I was kind of going back and forth on this, what I think I'm gonna do is build out sort of a warm salad. Um, again, just something when I saw that radicchio, I feel like it's just one of those things that tastes, so this is a very bitter green. I mean, it's purple, but you consider it a green. We actually had a question about the bitterness. Yeah. How do you work, how do you work with, how do you solve the bitterness of the uh, radicchio from Paulette? There we go. Yeah. Great question, Paulette. That's what I'm talking about. Lead me into, uh, into some talking points right here. This is the best way to do it. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Give me an overhead on that. Oh. Uh, we're a little, I'll keep it down there. Just perfectly caramelized. So 
you know, bitterness is not bad. Okay. I think actually in, uh, in, in this country, in the U S we tend to, uh, not use it a lot in our cooking, but if you go to Italy, they are balancing out food with, you know, bitterness is just one of the elements you're tasting the, the bitter elements in a lot of their dishes. And that was the first time I'm like, wow, this is kind of can be a bit shocking and intense, but I love it. Um, but it does just like anything. It is a, it is a taste and it needs to be balanced out. And that is why we can caramelize this right now and get a little bit more sweetness involved. So we are bringing out all of those natural sugars that are in the radicchio as well as the bitterness in its raw form. And by cooking them like this, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. We're gonna start caramelizing and really bringing those sugars out to life so your tongue can actually taste them. And that's gonna be a beautiful bitter, uh, beautiful bitter balance, uh, beautiful bittersweet balance. And for me, radicchio, just raw on a salad, it's fine. It's just not, I would say, my favorite thing in the world. Uh, like if I'm using this much, I don't want it as the base of my salad. Um, so this is such a good way to do it. And it doesn't need long to cook. That's why I'm doing it so often. So I'm just going to pop that here. Boom, boom, boom. And We'll just let that cool. And then I think the last warm element of this salad are gonna be some of these greens. And what we have, another bitter element. Huh, was I thinking about that? Will this be too bitter? I don't think so. Stay tuned to find right, stay out. Stay tuned to find out. So this is broccoli, Rob. You can blanch it if you want. That will take some bitterness out as well. Um, but I'm just gonna stir fry it. Real quick, I'll probably use half of it. I don't need all of this. It will wilt down a little bit. And I'm just cutting the, the stems a little bit shorter than the actual greens at the top because the greens are gonna cook much faster. So you're always thinking about balancing that out as well. Um, the, the thickness of your actual veggies and your meat so things cook in, in the right amount of time. Um, and again, these are little tips that you kind of just learn over, over time by cooking. So this just went into the pan completely. I'm going to go full blast on this and really stir fry. Fire this up. went into the pan completely dry, which is fine because I, you know, I just didn't get oil in there at the time. And now I'll just pour on a little bit of that fat again, which is going to melt down. Again, you can just use whatever oil. I've got like a little a little thing of oils and you know butter, there's some ghee, just whatever I'm feeling. I love having, uh, what do you call this? A Lazy Susan. This is one of my favorite little hacks, organization hacks, just like the essentials. We've got butter, we've got um, all different types of oils, fat, salt and pepper. Wow, we're really, uh... oh, we got flames. Whoop. Oh, you know what I forgot? I totally didn't salt either of these. So right now I will just add a tiny bit of salt. Doesn't need much because we're going to season the dressing. Don't, it's a, it's a fresh salad. It doesn't need to be super salty. Boom. You know what? And what I'll do is I'll get these going in a bowl. Actually, before that, we'll put that there. We'll put that there. And I will start slicing up some fresh things. So this is a radish. Again, these things were brewing around in my head. This is a radish, a daikon radish. This is the last daikon radish from my garden. I'm just gonna like roughly chop off some of the uh, wilted areas. It's organic, so I can use the skin. Uh, compost bin right here. Boom, 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 boom. Just always great to have this if you compost. Even if you, know, you can't compost where you're at, um, it's great to just have a little scrap bin on hand. So We've this, had a, uh, a lot of questions about the plastic containers and yeah. where are you going to get those? Yeah, so it's good to know because I am kind of scheming something in my head, a, a potential product that just kind of came to me yesterday. Um, but you can get the plastic products um, 
on Amazon, just like anything else. They're, you know, you can get them BPA free. A lot of people think you can't. Um, they're still not super high quality Tupperware, but I do find that they are so optimal as a home cook, as a pro home cook, because they all have the same lid and um, you, they're different sizes, but they can all stack and they have the same lid. So you don't have to worry of like, I end up getting, you know, uh, like eight different types of storage container brands and they just fill up in my, I'm sure you all have, have been there before. What is going on with this pan? Felt loose, I was nervous there. Oh. I think it's just super hot. Um, and are we done with the pan? We're done with the pan, turn Ooh. it off. So we've got our veg here. So yeah, just love these things. You can also just, you know, from your takeout, you can save them. Um, again, you know, oh, there you go. Plastic, uh, that was our first potential, uh, <laughs> first potential mishap of the episode, a plastic container on a really hot pan. I'm gonna put this over here and just get this out of the way. I think that's the last thing we are cooking so I can even take this away. Oh, sounds so peaceful in here now. Yeah. It's just really calmed down. Um, so, yeah, just absolutely love these. You can save them from your takeout or you can buy like specific, you know, BPA, better quality on Amazon. Um, yeah, so I am going to take this. Any other questions specific? Did I answer at all, would you say? I think so. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm, I'm trying my best over here to keep up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we just got, what are you making right now? People are just <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> That's a very good question. I'm, I'm slowly trying to figure that out myself. But the general idea in my head is a warm salad with a mustard vinaigrette type dressing. Um, I have this, I, I fermented mustard seeds and made this incredible mustard. And that was just, it just with the chicken and, and the, the warm veggies just felt right. So right now I'm taking this daikon and I'm just slicing this up thin. Boom, 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 boom. You can just turn that over. Always finding the flat side when you're cutting. Super important so you don't hurt yourself or cut your fingers. Uh, flat side, if ever, if anything ever gets like wonky and starts um, not feeling stable, just turn it over to the, the flat side. You know what, I'll just cut all of this. The best part about this show too, I I'm thinking right now Fridays, you let me know if that feels like a good time for you. Friday at 2 p.m. works for me. You know, I, I, I get to eat this for dinner, which is great. So I'm just here prepping food for myself, my family, maybe, maybe Cooper, maybe. I'll eat it. <laughs> um, and yeah, and we're just hanging out. So I'm going to throw that in there. I'm going to throw in the veggies. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Looking really nice. And then... What the last fresh ingredient I think I'm going to throw in there are some of these sprouts, which in the next video, not the next video, the video after the next, which is filmed, I showed you how to make these sprouts and why they are so incredible cost efficient wise, cost efficiency uh, to make at home. These are some lentil sprouts that I made from just some dried lentils. Um, so a great thing to just have around, especially in the winter when you, uh, when things aren't growing as much. It's just a fresh little kick that's extremely cheap that you can do in your very own kitchen. You don't need any soil or anything like that. So we have that. You know what? I don't even think, do I need a, like, do I need to make a dressing? Let me think about this. We've got our mustard here. I might just pop it all in. What do we got? We got mustard. Would love some balsamic, but I don't think I have it. This is like a lot of times, okay, now I'm building flavor. So I'm over at the fridge, just kind of looking for options. Oh, there's an option. See a lemon. Um, so that's going to be our acidic. That's going to be our acidic part of this salad. And then what else? I think, I think this might be really, really, really simple. You know what would be nice though? 
Do I want to do that? Yes, I do. Yes, do I do. It. There we go. We're doing it. I just bought this. Uh, this is some raw cheddar goat milk cheese, but it's nice and firm. I'm going to shave a little bit of that in there. I think that will be great. So really, the answer to, I don't know whose question it was of what I'm making, maybe a bunch of you are trying to figure that out, is I am making a warm salad with chicken. Really simple, actually similar to similar concept to what I've done in the recent 15 minute meal video of just a nice piece of chicken with a salad. And that's a complete meal for lunch. For I mean, that's a good lunch or dinner because it's not too, that's what I was kind of feeling. I didn't really want too many carbs. I think I, I just made a bunch of sourdough. Um, so I was just feeling, feeling light. So this is a light meal but still very filling. So I'm just gonna take this lemon, this is a, a Meyer lemon, squeeze that in there. I think I need a little bit more lemon juice. Boom, boom, boom. And what's nice about those warm greens is that they're really gonna absorb that flavor very well. Um, and just, oh, it's all, it's all gonna marry together. So I think, I think. We'll see. But what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> we got right. a, a couple questions about the burner and yeah. what's going on with that? Is it plugged in? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is just a lot of people ask about this. This is just a portable like catering stove, basically. Um, it uses these little propane tanks. So pretty much, you know, I've got a full induction range over here, but it's over here, so you don't want me cooking like this. Um, so let's turn that back on. Um, so that that thing's great. On it. Um, you know, for at least hosting a cooking show. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, now I added mustard to this, and that is just about two tablespoons. Oh, you know, it'd be nice that I don't have that fermented garlic honey would have been perfect in this from my last fermentation video. You know, I think this, I just realized this is a great time to talk about this apron and the little uh, exclusive deal we have for all of you on this live stream. Um, so bring that up, bring that up on the screen, Cooper, please, while I'm making this salad. I'm just going to mix this up. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Boom. Boom. Okay. So some of you were asking about this apron earlier on. Now, this is one of my favorite aprons. You've probably seen it on this channel um, for the last four or five years. I've been wearing this, I think, since the beginning of Pro Home Cooks. This is a brand called Chef Satchel. It is solid. That's why I like it. You've got the leather straps. Um, it doesn't sit on your neck. Some aprons sit on your neck. They do have multiple styles. And it's just this nice, heavy canvas. You've got the towel holder here. You've got, I mean, I rarely, right now I have my, my lav mic in here. So that's convenient, oh, full battery. That's great. Um, but yeah, there you go. You got a little pen holder. So all the pockets you would need, generally this is the, the main pocket that, or the main little strap that's most important. Um, but I never wore aprons until um, actually one of my best friends, two of my best friends got this for me. For a gift and I started wearing it and I'm like this is fantastic one I mean it's great for a mic because it just sits there and it doesn't have to be on your clothing but it really does feel like you kind of strap on like a thing of armor like you know you're your superhero costume and you're ready to go as a home cook so I love this thing and we sell it at pro home cooks so as you can see on the screen we are giving out 20% if you use right there, Chef 20 at checkout. And that's gonna be for the first 50 people who use that coupon code at Pro Home Cooks. We do sell a few other aprons. This to me is my favorite. This is the one I've, I've worn for years. We also sell you know, pretty much everything in this kitchen at Pro Home Cooks. So that's what ProHomeCooks.com is all about. It's a curated shopping experience for all of you out there as you know, just to optimize as a home cook. Um, we so got a you, uh, question yeah. about how do you wash that apron? So you basically, to wash this apron, you just unclip right here. This is what's great. So you don't want to wash the, uh, the leather. You unclip all the leather so everything comes apart. 
and then you just throw the canvas right in the washing machine. You let it air dry. That's at least what I do. Um, and it works great. And this has like a nice worn down vibe. I like, you know, I like the, the, the worn uh, feeling of this apron. Um, and you know, it's like a kitchen. When I go into a kitchen and it's too polished and too clean, because I used, I used to cater, I, and I would go into, you know, <laughs> I've been in hundreds of different kitchens and instantly you know if someone cooks or not. Just you walk in and you're like, okay, this kitchen, it should be a little bit worn. You also know by the setup of where things are, but just, yeah, there's a feeling that this kitchen is used. And I, I like that with an apron that it's a little worn in and you know that home cooking has been done. And for me, five years, this same apron, that's another thing. Quality is just incredible. This, you know, it, again, it just looks a little more worn, but nothing has broken down on this from five years, the inception of, of Pro Home Cooks. Um, so yeah, you can take that off now. Chef 20 um, at checkout, first 50 people, head over to prohomecooks.com and use that coupon code. So here we go. So I had a little mustard in there. I was actually gonna add oil, but the truth is, you know, there's so much, um, there's so much fat in the um, in the the veggies that we cook that you don't need extra fat right now. And that's the beautiful thing about cooking at home is you control the ratios. Um, and the, the question actually that I have is the salt right now because I haven't seasoned seasoned this, but maybe I'm fine with that. I think that's why recipes. You're gonna hear me bash on recipes a lot in the show. Uh, Cause my, you know, if I have one goal, it's to break you free of recipes because there are just so many benefits that I'm sure you've understood. If you are in that, uh, if you have started to break free of recipes, maybe you don't use recipes, but just essential benefits as a home cook, um, including controlling your own seasoning. So. You know, every recipe is gonna tell you, okay, you gotta season your salad, but what about these factors? That mustard already has some seasoning in it. Um, we have some seasoning on the veggies already, and to me, that was enough right there. Also, the chicken is pretty heavily seasoned, um, so that's gonna carry through if you eat the chicken and the salad. So I'm feeling great about that any questions any questions yeah we got a we're... question about uh the chicken stock or the chicken fat yeah about storing that and how long it would last yeah great question so thank you uh mantha or johnny i don't know mantha john mantha johnny um so with you know there's no like specific timings when it, you can't say okay a week and that that's it it's impossible to say that because every ingredient is going to react different. Your environment and the temperature is going to be different. But generally with a fat, like a butter or an oil, when it sits, you can see it's kind of solidified here just because of the temperature. I will let this sit out for a few days at room temperature if I know that that wasn't that much. It's like if it's out, I'm going to use it. And if it's a little bit, the goal over the next few days would just be to use it as I'm cooking. Um, but if not, you can throw this in the fridge and you're going to get a lot longer. Obviously you can throw it in the freezer and really extend. Um, so it just depends on when you're going to use it. And yeah, that's pretty much, uh, it's pretty, you know, right here I have, um, a ghee that's sitting out, it's cultured. So like it, it's gonna be able to stay out a little longer. And I'm just trying to use this up over the next few days, but you can always just throw something in the fridge to extend. Uh, but I do like having it out early on just to, you know, get it going. Right. See, we might have another question yep. here. I saw something about uh, storing. Oh yeah, here we go. Tips on storing produce so it stays fresh in the fridge. Yeah, so as far as produce goes, and we're gonna kind of, I was gonna make, so basically the goal was to, again, do as much meal prep as possible um, in the time that I, I have no idea. What, what is our time? Do you know the? the... We are at 50 minutes just 50 about. minutes. So again, I'm talking to you, but generally in the morning, I have about 
30 to 45 minutes to just make as much food as possible before, you know, kids going to school or whatever it is. I'm, I'm going to work. Um, so I was thinking about making some energy balls with um, energy balls. You've seen that on the channel. That was the last thing. I just personally, I needed them for my fam because um, I just ran out. So I was going to blend up some some dates and some nuts but i think we can just take some questions and pretty much end this thing so what i'm going to do here and i'll talk about your storing question i swear um so what i'm going to do here is basically chop this up well what am i going to do here so right now honestly <laughs> you know you got to think about it so you can see let's just see how this is cooked Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so really nice. Let's let's give it a taste. Really nice. I would say slightly, maybe slightly over, um, but that's chicken breast. It's like you're working with five, dis five degrees of discrepancy sometimes. And... Um, you know, between <laughs> perfect and overcooked. And obviously you can't undercook it, uh, but that's, you know, it's, it's still delicious. So I'm just gonna add that right in there. And instead of like plating up something fancy, we're just going full on chicken, warm chicken salad. And that to me, I mean, right now, that's gonna be an incredible dinner for me and my wife. Um, could be a lunch. You can, you know, that's gonna also hold up really well, which is great. I'm actually gonna package, oh, we have, the, the question is on packing, right? Storage? Yeah, tips on okay. storing produce. Well, while we store this, why don't we talk about that? So, storing produce, I mean, there are a lot of ways to go about this, but one of my favorite things you can do is one of these uh, little, we actually sell these at Pro Home Cooks as well. Um, this right here is a mini vacuum sealer from Zwilling, and they come with these vacuum sealing bags. So I could take that radicchio, I could pop it in there. That's a little, that might, that might crunch it a little bit, um, but cabbage and you know veggies that can hold up to a vacuum sealing if you want the most amount of time. Um, and when it comes to Storing other veggies, just a, a plastic bag. I'll reuse a lot of Ziploc bags. Um, and, you know, you can use the drawers in your refrigerator that are more, you know, humidity controlled. Uh, so those, I guess, would be my, my main tips. All right, so we are just going to package this up. And if there's any last questions, I mean, we're going to be pretty much wrapping it up. I wish I had some bigger containers, but we'll go, we'll go four here sure we got uh let's see here all right oh have uh have your parents gotten into cooking more since you've been doing the channel yeah that's a great question so they have a lot you know i talk about this <laughs> i talk about this a lot or just throughout the years on the channel that one of the big reasons my brother and i got into cooking was because my parents weren't great cooks they didn't love it um and it was just kind of natural like oh we want uh we want things that taste good so let's just start making food ourselves and over the years um both of my parents have become much better cooks. They're much more into it. I think, you know, my mom never loved cooking. She was just putting food on the table for us. But over the time, she's kind of adapted and found a, a love for cooking. And that's, that's very important. You know, there's, there's putting food on the table, but of course there is, uh, you know, having a passion for it. And you're trying to, for me at least in my life, it's linking those two up because, you know, you got to show up every day to either feed yourself, feed your family, whoever it is. Um, so there's got to be some passion. It's got to come from somewhere. Um, and then there's, of course, the survival aspect of, you know, eating healthy, um, feeding yourself and connecting to what's going into your body. So, yeah, my parents have, 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 you know, over the last, I would say, decade have kind of sparked that passion in cooking. And it's, it's been... Definitely been cool to see. 
Um, and I've gotten inspired by some of the things they've cooked as well, which is, which is very neat. Some of the things you've probably seen on the channel have come from them at this point. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to do it. What did we make? Let's, uh, let's recap real quick and we'll see where this is at. So, you know, it's 50 minutes again. I made an entire um, dinner. I mean, this could be four portions, probably two portions, um, because this is gonna be dinner. And then this, everyone in the fam is gonna like this. I'm just gonna give that a stir just to see where we're at. This can just sit in the fridge. So right now, look how much, like this is ready. To, that's perfect consistency. Ready to eat right now. Um, actually, that is, that's perfect. I would say if that continues to sit overnight, then it might need to be thin out, thinned out a little bit. But that is that is just absolutely. Can we get a front front view on that? Oh. Trying to get that in focus. Boom. Oh yes, the focus has been found. Serve that up with some fruit. So I'm happy with that meal prep. I wanted to get some energy balls uh, going, but you know, first live stream. Let's cut it at just an hour. And we're gonna try to do this every Friday. You can sign up for the membership now um, at uh, Pro Home Cooks on the main page. If you wanna get the icon, the Pro Home Cooks icon, the official icon, if you wanna be you know, top of the chat. Um, I appreciate all the super chats. Remember, if you can throw up that coupon code one more time, oh, yeah. Chef Satchel. 20% uh, off any Chef Satchel products. Um, so they make multiple aprons. They have uh, leather knife holders. I have one of those, which is great. Head over to prohomecooks.com. Use the coupon code below. And that's it. See you next Friday at 2 p.m. And hopefully this helped. And we will, uh, we can, we can, uh, Oh, just as that's the camera died. That's that's Perfect. it. We'll figure out that GoPro after. All right. All right. All right. Adios.